<laughs> twisted, and I didn't realize how bad that hurt until it happened. Ow! This thing that when they when they gang up in numbers, they're unbeatable. <laughs> it was just me and him. Oh, it was, it was just me and one. Him alone oh, in wow. Room. Yeah. <laughs> I was dude. trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. Wow. Mm. No, <laughs> homeboy's strong, dude. And he just didn't think anything of it. All right, let me switch. This I was, I, we we're just going about our business, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna beat the shit out of you." I was like, go. all right, man. I guess that's <laughs> what we're gonna do today. <laughs> right, let me fix so, this. an an eventful first day. It honestly wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to come home and put Neosporin all over myself so I don't get a fucking infection. <laughs> like, oh, what'd you do when you got home? I just took a bath in Neosporin. No big right, deal. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. There, there's another one. It's kind of hard for me to, sh- yeah, I'm not going to be able to show you with the camera, but it looks like he bit me. But he, again, mm. he just dug his fingernails into my skin. Ow. That's, that's rough. Yeah, dude. Uh, our teacher uh, last semester, he ripped a chunk of her hair out. Oh my god! On like a a good chunk, like I noticed when I first met her that she had some hair missing, and I was like, "Well, I'm not, you know, it could be natural, right? Not natural. She had just a fucking chunk of hair, wow, (laughs) torn out of her head by this man." (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Ah, that sounds lovely. By the way, Jason, um, Mark Simmons, aka Touch Biloxi. Wanted to know if we could uh, host his birthday party this year. When is and, that? Uh, <laughs> February 18th, I think. Oh so if you could just give a God. yes or no live on air, that would be great. <laughs> I, we, Me and Derek were just talking about how busy uh, our next like two and a half months are. Might as well just add one more thing to it. Might as well. Yeah, why not? <laughs> just so keep, want, just keep, keep it going. So you want to do it or no? I mean, we can tell them now. I want to. I just, God, like every week. Uh, that's like, what? What day is that? So Saturday, I think. Uh, is that the Saturday, Saturday night. before Pensacon? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I just gleed it on my microphone. I haven't done that since middle school. <laughs> <laughs> um, Give me a day to figure out. I got to look at the schedule because I got so much crap going on the next like two and a half months before things calm down. No, I was I was literally gonna tell him no until he was like, uh, yeah, Jason can host it too. It'll be like an open mic just thing. I was like, Well, I'll ask Jason. And if he says yes, then I'll All do right. it. Give me a day to figure everything out. Because <laughs> we're not getting paid. So oh, great. <laughs> Give me some beer or something or or some food. I will yeah, take right. payment in alcohol. Yeah. Nothing I haven't done before. Yeah. Just some magic mushrooms or some shit. Yeah. Right. Uh, all right, fellas, are we ready to do this show? Yeah, I'm ready whenever you guys are. Here we go. I'm walking off. All right, see you later. Here we go. <laughs> and three, two, one. Can you hear it now? Is it quiet? Can you hear it? You know what that music means. It is time for the Open Micers Podcast. My name is Jason Robbins. I'm Jacob Craig. I'm very unprofessionally chewing these things called High Chews, not a sponsor. They're so fucking good. They're like gum that you can eat. Mm, so I'm just going to be munching and spitting all over this fucking Yeah, you already gleeked microphone. all over your microphone a minute ago, so that's that's. Is it sanitary. gleek or gleek? I never got that. I think it's gleek. It's G-L-E-E-K, I believe. Uh, we should look at the uh, look it up in the dictionary, see if it's in there. All right, hold on, let me look it up real quick, and, and then we'll. Oh my, no, it's uh, this show's gonna be over by the time you get a fucking result. <laughs> anyway, uh, our guest tonight knows exactly how bad Jason is at googling. <laughs> it says uh, "gleek" is a noun. This is an old game at of at cards played by three persons with forty four cards, each person having twelve and eight being left for the stock. What does that mean? It would be easier for me to just call Wally and ask him. Yeah, let's just ask him. He can call in, whatever. But our guest for tonight is his, his trifecta. It's his third time on the show, coming back to talk about the return of his beloved podcast and also a short film that he just did. And he's my beloved co-host over at the Nerd Cave Retro Show, Mr. Derek Diamond. Beloved might be a little bit of a stretch, but I, I do appreciate the compliment. No, it's 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 great to be back. You know, it's it's crazy that 
It's already my third appearance. The second one just seems like yesterday. I, f- I feel like they've all coincided with either like the end of the year or the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. something like that. So no, I'm excited to be back. We- it's uh, it's four if you if count the time you hosted with uh, with me and um, uh, Laura Laura May Face. Smith. Yeah, true. Oh yeah, yeah. So does does that make it four, or does I that one get does. an asterisk? It, it might get an asterisk because you you took the the shoes of um, googling things and getting no answers and having a bad soundboard. So, um. <laughs> hey, you want to do it? You, I will gladly give you the reins to to Here's operate the, the soundboard, record the show, edit it, upload it, all that. I'll let you do all that. No, that's okay. I'll just make fun of you while you do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't answer, by the way, so we can continue. All right. So, uh, Derek, what, what's your, what's your, uh, what do you think? Is it Gleek, G L E E K, or Gleet, G L E E T? Because I'm waiting I always, for Gleet. I always thought it was with a T, but I've never, I've never T. heard of that card game before. Like I, I went, <laughs> so I went through a phase in high school where I played actually a lot of card games, like poker mm-hmm. and you know various things like that. But I've never heard of that card game before. Oh, Gleek was also the monkey on the Super Friends. You remember the friend of... uh, Oh, that was his name. The Wonder Twins. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I just Googled what Gleek means. Oh, my God. I just looked at it, too. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that either. (laughs) We might as well make it a trifecta. I'll look it up, too. Uh, Look up Gleet, G-L-E-E-T, and then we'll tell the people what it is. They're not going to tell them. We're going to employ them oh to Google my it for themselves. God. That's, I think that's what I figured. I it just want to know what, by your guys' reaction. What does mucopurulent discharge mean? <laughs> mine just says watery it's, discharge. Ew. Yeah, that's what mine said, too. Ew. That's a rabbit hey, hole I don't think we need Google. to go down. Jason, you're on that old Google. Dude. On you need old, dude, I'm using DuckDuckGo the fuck is that yeah, that's fantastic that same thing it's you a, have to operate it with a fucking shotgun <laughs> it's, it's a google chrome plug-in you jackass i don't even i'm not even trusted around plugins so i've never know. i've never heard of this until just now it's a search engine that does not save your your searches um, oh gotcha. i wonder why you have to use that so that i don't have stupid like let me let me tell you some of my Google searches. You want me to read you some of my Google searches on the phone when I actually use Chrome? I want nothing more. All right, here we go. Um, let's see. Uh, I was in I was in New Orleans this weekend, so I, I put in a buffet French Quarter, New Orleans, mm-hmm. looking for a buffet. Uh, let's see, flea markets near me. Uh, <laughs> what was the phone number to call for the time? You remember when you were a kid? Uh, well, you you guys probably never did this back in the eighties and and seventies, eighties, nineties. When you wanted to know the time and temperature, you had to call a certain number. You remember that? I can't say that I do. Fuck, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm from the 21st century. Uh, let's see. Uh, I bought Star Wars Squadrons on the PlayStation, and I, I Googled, do you need PSVR to play Star Wars Squadrons? And no, you do Shit not. Game. Um, let's see. Never they took it. the worst part of the Battlefront games and made it a game. Who the fuck thought of that? EA. And, uh, Crockpot recipes. So that's my. Oh, that's most, a good one. Uh, and also. Crockpot recipes. Pensacon 2023. I was looking up the date for, for Pensacon. So that's uh, that's dude. my recent Google history. This Pensacon's going to be a banger, though, dude. I wasn't yeah. planning on going, but then they got a fucking scream reunion. <sighs> yeah, I'm there. I'm going to have to do. Uh, I'm going to have to fill out the forums for open micers so you can get your ticket. Oh yeah, I'm. We're we're doing Nerd Cave Retro, so I'll get mine, and we'll we'll do yours for open micers. Yeah, hand out some business cards. All right, I got to get off this, yeah. this page that tells me what Gleet is, because that's just not pleasant. <laughs> 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 oh great! Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, sorry, that was a two parter. There you go. So Derek, yeah, brought to you by High Chew. We we actually by High Chew. We brought Derek on which is the delicious by the way to uh mm. to talk to maybe we'll get a high chew sponsorship that would be awesome that would be great. be great not a fucking chance dude i've said retarded in like the last three episodes <laughs> and you just said it again are you trying That's to so get God damn it. <laughs> we edit that out yeah don't worry about it it's fine fuck it we'll do it are live. you sure i can edit it out 
<laughs> but it's it's harder to edit on the the Twitch feed and YouTube. <laughs> the live tw- can we edit that on the live Twitch feed? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm leaving it in. So you're gonna have to deal with that in a couple of years when they find out. Who's they? The CIA? <laughs> the, the you're gonna comp- fucking kill me? The people you work for? Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's not good. Oh well. Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll <laughs> I'll edit it out of the uh, the audio portion, and uh, there we go. No one watches yeah. your Twitch anyway, so we'll be safe. Yeah. So. All right. So, Derek, please tell us what's going on with uh, the Derek Diamond Experience, the return of the Great Derek Diamond Experience podcast. Well, I did want to say, first of all, it's the most mind blowing part of the show being back. It was almost like it never left because the listenership is pretty much exactly the same as it was when I stopped the show just over a year ago. It stayed at zero. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So it was like it just blew my mind. You know, it just consistency is key, my friend. (laughs) <laughs> but, but yeah no it was uh I, I was very surprised with how the you know the, the show's only i released a third episode since being back today so it's been it's been pretty consistent but i mean long story short i miss doing the show like feature presentation was fun but at the end of the day it wasn't quite the same and i feel like the Derek diamond experience was almost like part of my identity. Mm. Like people know me from doing that show and shout out to, to Chad Sanders. If he ever hears this, because he, he had talked about doing some promo podcasts for the feature. And initially I was like, no, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole again. But then I thought about it and I was like, well, let me just gauge interest online. So I put out a couple of polls asking people which show they preferred. The result was overwhelmingly, the Derek Diamond experience. So long story short, I decided let's do it. Let's bring it back. So the show's back. Yeah, the, the feature uh, presentation podcast just sounded like it took a lot of work to do. Yeah. And Derek Diamond yeah. just it feels more loose and and I don't know, just like it just feels better for you because I know you you overwork yourself when you do things like oh, I, I never overwork myself yeah. <laughs> with anything I don't go all in for anything are you okay Jacob I was just <laughs> wondering <laughs> like did you freeze like that or? yeah like is his feet frozen is he is he <laughs> dying I, what's, I what's going to, on I thought I was gonna have to call his mom to go check on him <laughs> yeah <laughs> you should call your mom to come check on me <laughs> oh <laughs> man <laughs> But no, I actually I missed the feature presentation podcast in the in the way of like unrealistically, I wish you could do both shows because feature presentation was so fun with sort of like the the I guess op ed podcast you did about certain topics and it was exciting to see you, you know, go over like Cobra Kai with the actual Cobra Kai actors and stuff like that. But uh, I guess with the Derek Diamond experience being back, though, you can you can kind of do sort of the same thing for that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, the cool thing about the Derek Diamond experience is that it has a little bit more variety, like feature presentation evolved into just being interviews. But with the Derek Diamond experience, I could do the top five list, do mm-hmm. roundtable discussions. I heck, I think, you know, a, a roundtable with the three of us doing maybe top five comedies would be a lot of fun. I'm yeah, that'd be great. Do you want to get canceled or what? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, yeah, it, it would still be a fun podcast. Jacob tries to get us canceled skills. every week, so you got to be on your toes when when Der- when Jacob's on the show. I'm no Pepper Goins, but I have a mouth. <laughs> no, but we we love you for it, though. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on my filter. I'm like a Keurig right now. I need to get to a Mister Coffee. I need the more filter. Well, there's that was a good you, you, fucking you take, analogy. You, Fuck you, you take guys. baby steps. That's good. That's very good. But no, it's there are elements of feature presentation that I do miss, and I don't regret trying that show out because I wanted to do something different. But at the end of the day, Derek Diamond experience was in a way more fun because, like Jason said, it felt more loose. With feature presentation, I tried to give like a more professional kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. Whereas with the Derek Diamond experience, it's more just kind of me being myself. 
Yeah. And, w- and with a show like the feature presentation, that's something you have to go all in on and be concentrate 100% just on making that show, the content for the show. And even just hearing you talk about it, like behind the scenes just felt tiring to me. Like with, with nerd cave retro and open micers, like I have it so streamlined the way we do these shows that it's very minimal work. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's work. You have to know what you're doing in order to make it that easy. But these shows are relatively easy to produce and make. But with feature presentation, I mean, you've got like segments and you've got people you're talking to and it just feels like a good part to jump in on a lot of work. Hey, uh, not to not to ruin anyone's groove, but I have Wally on the phone (laughs) just to um, fuck with Jason, basically. Okay. Wally, uh, say something for the people. so, So see if they can hear you through my microphone. Hello, uh, this is Wally, long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> can you hear him? <laughs> yeah, I can hear him. Okay, so um, Wally, I asked Jason to Google because, so I, I gleated all over my microphone, which is something I haven't done since oh. middle school, and I asked Jason to Google if it's Gleek or Gleet, because he thought it was Gleek, and I thought it was Gleet, and of course it took him 50 million years to find the answer, so I was just going to call you and ask what you thought it was. Uh, Gleek with a K. Ha! Really? Ha! 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 So me and Derek are team Gleek with a T. And we found out that was not the case. That's not the case. Do you want to just Google Gleek real quick for us, Wally? So we can get your reaction on that? (laughs) Yeah, I just, I just, I just looked it up. Health.com. Gleeking with a K is one of the human body's most unique talents. Most people who gleek do so accidentally while talking, eating, or yawning. But as it stands, it is the act of inadvertently spitting while talking. Okay. Underneath, uh, oh, great. I have to actually open up the whole article. (laughs) But yeah, it is gleek with a K. Okay. Well, I'm happy to be wrong. Can you do me a favor and Google gleet with a T and just see what happens? Oh, God. Uh... Okay. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> that was way worse. Yeah, I was doing that with my I mouth, apparently. I hope you didn't bleed. <laughs> oh, I bleeded, Bubba. I bleeded everywhere. Uh, it, well, um, I think this is a good time for me to exit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We love you, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Uh, and now Google's going to be wondering why there's an uptick in the search for Gleet <laughs> over the next few days. And they're gonna... dozens of people are googling uh, Gleet. <laughs> courtesy of the Open Micers podcast. Uh, well, that was fun. Yeah, we should get yeah. a sponsorship from Gleeting. Yeah, I should get Gleet dot com and uh, redirect the show there. I bet it's already. That would be it. hilarious. Let, Let me, me get, look it up. Get my browser open real quick. No, I'll do it, Jason. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll it. do it. You want to know why? Because it'll take me five seconds, Jason. Uh, there, That's it, why. It's available. There is no gleet.com. That is surprising, actually. Wow. Okay. All right, let's go to name.com <laughs> <laughs> and, re- and redirect the feature presentation podcast. <laughs> gleet.com. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it uh, never even existed uh, exactly there we go we're learning a lot see P, you, you can learn yeah. things from the open micers podcast yeah yeah you can i learned some i learned a lot tonight on on the i show did so i far. did too i'm glad i came on the show this week 16 minutes and seven seconds into the show and i already learned the difference between gleek and gleet and both of them are awful but one way more awful than the other yes and high chews are delicious <laughs> yeah high chews are they delicious are. What's up? What flavor do you have, Jacob? I had all of them. Oh, <laughs> good choice. You probably ate. Yeah. yeah, why have one when you can just have all of them? Yeah, yeah I had six of them. So, Fantastic. yeah, it was supposed to last me through the whole show, and it lasted me through 16 minutes and seven seconds. <laughs> all right. So, Jacob uh, claims that uh, uh, um, uh, what a bit of honeys are old man candy. What is your stance, J- uh, uh, Derek? Do you like a uh, bit of I don't honey? even know what to call them. You're a horrible friend. 
<laughs> you just tried to call him Jacob. Well, it's because, because we dude, I glasses. do podcasts with both of you. So it, now that you're both on the same podcast, it's hard <laughs> wait, to, to say the Jason, right name. Here's the thing. Me and Derek get along swimmingly. I really like Derek. We're the opposite fucking person. No kidding. Like, there's but, no getting us confused. But you're both right in front of me, and I'm an old man with the beginning stages of dementia. So, <laughs> so take it what you will. And that's why you like Bit of Honey, isn't it? Yeah. So Derek, <laughs> I was waiting for that to come. <laughs> so, Derek, what are your thoughts on Bit of Honey? I couldn't tell you the last time I had Bit of Honey. It's probably been... God, when was the last time I had that? I, I don't know. I... The only candy I really associate with old men are Werther's Originals. I like Werther's yeah. too. I so have when a, I have a whole so candy when I, dish full. <laughs> so when I worked at the Blue Wahoos, there was an old man who was an usher there who would hand out Werther's Originals to people. That's going to be me. Games. I'm going to be a janitor at, at the Blue Wahoo <laughs> stadiums. You're not even going to work there. You're just going to go there to hand out <laughs> just, Werther's just, Originals. Just stand outside the front gate. Here you go. I have don't, a, don't ask questions, just take it. I have a plain blue go. jumpsuit, too. I can just walk around the stadium giving out uh, where there's originals to people. You should get one of those, um, what, those full body suits that cover, like, your face and everything that's all one solid color. No one will ever know it's you. Dude, I should make it a Pepsi Man costume. <laughs> oh, and even better. Hand out where there's originals, because that makes sense. And that works because Pepsi's one of their sponsors. Uh, yeah. So if anything, you're 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 spreading the good word. See, because Jacob thinks a bit of honey is an old man candy because it's easy on the teeth. I say nay, because a bit of honey will rip out every filling in your head uh, because it's that chewy. But here's the thing, right? This is so this is the fucking Hulk logic, right? Where it's like, (laughs) you don't get angry. You're always angry. You know what I mean? You don't try to chew the bit of honey. You just wash it around in your mouth until it fucking dissipates. Because you ain't got no teeth. Hmm. That's the secret, Captain. Okay. I, I get it, but, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think you know how to eat candy. Obviously, I do, Jason. I ate six candies since we've been sitting here. Yeah, but it's like he's perfected it into an art form. You didn't let the high chews wash around your mouth. You didn't even taste them. You just threw them down and swallowed them like they were fucking pills. Yeah, I just snorted six high cheese, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking crunk right now. Uh-huh. So, so Derek, you, you make Jacob's movies. gonna Jacob's gonna crash like in 20 minutes. Yeah. He's just we're just gonna see him fall back in a chair. He's gonna fall over. I've he's, been up since five in the morning. And he has diabetes. Oh, so you're die. definitely gonna crash. Jacob has diabetes and he's throwing back high chews like the like they're vitamins. So he's gonna be And uh, I'm drinking regular mug root beer too. So great. Like, yeah, dude, I'm just really I trying go to go for a root beer right now, actually. Mm-hmm. Root beer break. Let's do it. Let's schedule it into <laughs> if, the show. If I, if, I, if I had one, I would gladly partake. I got some Dr. Pepper Zero cream sodas downstairs I have to break open. Uh, that, that sounds lovely, too. All the times I've been at your house and I've never had a Dr. Pepper Zero cream soda, I'm offended. <laughs> I just bought them the other day because they haven't had them in the store in like a you year. called me. Well, you can come over right now and I'll give you a, a cream soda. I'm on my way. All right. <laughs> All right. Don't end the stream. Of um, <laughs> Switch to his phone. <laughs> so, uh, Derek, uh, you uh, you make movies. What that? What's that about? Uh, allegedly. What a great I, question. I, I attempt to. <laughs> <laughs> that was um. That was that was my Mark Simmons impression <laughs> of interviewing. Um, it's like it's like that Chris Farley segment. Yeah. You make movies. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was, no, I that watched. Cool. I watched your newest movie. Um, I think it was day before yesterday. I watched it, and I I liked as a comedian. And it's called the feature, by the way. The that you don't yeah. even know the name of it because uh, you're such a horrible friend. I know the name of it. <laughs> you didn't of say it. Of course I know the name of Why it. Why didn't you say the name of it? You just said I saw your movie. Because I'm dumb, Jason. I don't know. I thought we already said it. Okay. Anyways, it's called The Feature. I watched it. I really liked it. I actually I thought it was I thought it was very funny. And just that the whole plot is it's a short film about a man who looks like you who's making a short film. <laughs> That wasn't initially the plan. It just kind of worked out that way. It's funny because uh, when we did the auditions uh, back in June, we so with the Parker syndrome, my first film, we I did solely like pre-recorded 
auditions. I didn't do anything in person, but I wanted to do that for this one. And Jace Gibson, who ends up playing the role of Matt, he comes in, he does his audition. I, he was great. Like it was one of those things that I could have offered him the role right then, because it was like, he was exactly what I was looking for as far as performance goes. But my wife, Samantha, she was on the other side of the room. She was checking in the actors coming into audition after Jace leaves, she comes over and says, he talks just like you. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I guess he does. Like, I, I don't ever think of how I talk, but yeah, he ended up getting the role. And then it was actually her idea also for him to wear glasses. And then I'm like, OK, this is getting a little <laughs> meta for my taste, but it, it worked. So but no, it was it, it, it was a really fun experience making this movie. The, the cast was great. Um Everyone down from, you know, the leads to the supporting roles, the extras were even great as well that we did for the the restaurant scenes. Uh, crew was great, had a really solid crew throughout the whole thing. And it was it was a lot of long hours. It, it took more to make this one because it was so much more in depth, I felt like, than my last movie. But it was worth it in the end because I learned so much from making it. I didn't get to. Uh, I got to be there for the first move uh, short film you made, the Parker Syndrome, and uh, I got to do sound on that one, which uh, for it was kind of a, a new experience for me and you, because I never got to do sound and you had never directed before, and it, it was kind of fun to to be on the other side of the camera doing stuff like that, and I saw how you were learning how to direct, how to be on a set, how to how to direct people and run things. How was it different this time around than doing it the first time? Well, I felt like I actually knew what I was doing this time around. Mm -hmm. So I felt more confident and more prepared because I knew more of what I was getting into as opposed to the Parker syndrome. And I also did much more rehearsals with the cast than I did with the Parker syndrome. With the Parker syndrome, we did, I think, two rehearsals, one with the brother and sister characters, and then one with the entire cast with the feature we did like individual, like one-on-one -on -one auditions or rehearsals. We did um, group ones Then we did one big table read a week before we shot. So they were all pretty well prepared. Everyone was pretty prepared mm -hmm. for, for this short. Uh, yeah. Cause the first one, uh, the Parker syndrome, you had, this one long continuous shot, which ended up being how many minutes long was that shot exactly? Do you remember? Uh, it was maybe around like three, three, four minutes. Yeah, I think it doesn't sound like long, but when you have so many moving parts, the camera is moving, the actors are all, all doing their thing, all the background actors, that was such a bold step to try to do for your first uh for your first film did you do anything like that on this one uh to try to get like a continuous shot like that or did you did you kind of be like no I'm not doing that this time around well I didn't want to do I didn't want to do that exact same thing but we we did do a cool um transition where there there's a there's a scene in the movie where it's right before they start shooting the movie within a movie and the Katie character who's kind of Matt's best friend she's also playing the the ad because she has onset experience whereas he does not and she runs into uh doug the sound guy and they have a brief little exchange and then she walks into the camera and her shoulder covers the the lens and then we come out to a close-up of her shoulder where the camera zooms out and she's in a different setting talking to different characters so the that was a little bit more um like a different type of challenge, but I, I think it worked out well. Yeah. I really enjoy the movie. I, you know, the Parker syndrome was such a great first effort for a filmmaker, but this one I felt when I was watching it, I actually felt like this could be like the pilot of a series, like a Netflix series or something like that. And it has that slick look to it too. Well, that's all props to Kevin Almodovar, who, that you know, dude, you, you worked with it. Why he's, he's not he's, filming, he's a legend. Why he's not filming Marvel movies right now is beyond me. And he is I, I credit him as one of my mentors because he has really taught me how to look at things from 
a visual standpoint, you know, beyond just the words on the page. Mm -hmm. And I learn something new from him every time, whether it's on my projects or we work on, you know, a mutual friends project. Uh, he he's just such a wealth of knowledge and he explains things in a way that you can easily understand mm -hmm. and you don't feel like an idiot. That's how he taught me to do sound. Like I had never done sound before. I had never even touched the equipment before, but I had to learn that morning because it was going to be me running sound all day. Just me, nobody else for that day. And he literally taught me how to run the equipment, uh, uh, you know, like save the files, how to name them, all this stuff. And he taught me in like, what, 10, 15 minutes. And I, I felt like I was getting like an actual filmmaking education from somebody who just is like a master teacher who can just teach you something in just minutes. The most mind blowing thing about him is uh, we worked on a project together uh, back in July and he asked me to go down to his truck and he told me exactly where this piece of equipment was. <laughs> and I walked down to the truck and sure enough, it was down like two in conjunction to other um, other pieces of gear. It was exactly where he said it was. Oh, you know, he's got to be the most uh, just he has to have everything in the, the he knows where everything is. And just everything is just down down to a T where everything is. It's all just where it's supposed to be at all times. Mm -hmm. So when he says that there, he said, I, my one major rule or one of my major rules, if you don't know where something is, do not just put it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Tell, say you don't know where to put it and I will tell you where to put it. Cause I think I've worked with him on, on not only your project, but he also did on uh, survey. Yeah. Did it. He was on survey as well. And just, Man, like the most, one of the most professional but friendliest people on the planet. And we should try to get him on the show here. Cause you that should. dude, I, I, like I said, I don't know why he's not working for like Disney or something right now. Like he's just one of the best cinematographers, undiscovered cinematographers on the planet. Yeah. And he, he did such an incredible job with, he did a great job with the Parker Syndrome too. But I think even with the feature, it, it and not I don't want to discredit the Parker syndrome because I'm very proud of how that turned out. Mm -hmm. But with the feature, it's got a, I think, more relatable story. The characters are more relatable. Mm -hmm. uh, the storylines, everyone can relate to at least one of the characters and what they're going through at some point in time. It deals with a lot of my struggles and my insecurities that I think are relatable. It's just a better movie. In my opinion, watching it, I could definitely tell it had a lot more of your heart and soul in it. Like, don't get me wrong. The Parker syndrome is it. It's very heavy subject matter, but it's not. Well, something... as you know, I was not in the greatest of places at that. time. Yeah, <laughs> it's very heavy subject matter. And it's it's kind of a, a, a lot to to deal with in a short amount of time. But this one feels like this came straight out of your heart. Like this is. You know, you put yourself in this and I can see that like there's just a lot more of just it, it's just uh, it's a labor of love is what it was. Well, I have to give uh, my wife, Samantha, credit, too, because she got really involved with the whole process because uh, I, I wrote this script before COVID. But that derailed everything. I did work on a couple of projects between then and now. But um, I would revisit it every now and then. And uh, she asked to read the script and she said, you know, well, I, I really like the story, but I've got a couple of ideas. You know, do you mind if I share them with you? So I said, sure. And she helped really add some depth to the characters. And then my producer, Chad Sanders, helped add some of the comedy. So I, I, I had a lot more help with this movie than I did with my previous one, which helped alleviate a lot of the pressure for me. Yeah. So what's the plan for this one? Uh, a festival run? Mm hmm. Yep. So the, the premiere, um, if you're listening to this, so your, your guys show drops on Wednesdays, right? Uh, yeah, it'll be out Wednesday, this Wednesday. Okay. So, um, it'll be a week from Saturday will be the premiere of the feature in Pensacola. Um, you can go to facebook.com slash the feature movie, 
uh, click on the event page and see where to buy tickets and everything. And then uh, once that's done, I'll start submitting it to festivals. And then uh, hopefully I'll get to maybe do another short sometime this summer. But my, my main thing that I'm working on, and this will probably be a next year kind of thing. I want to do a murder mystery feature film. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. If you've seen knives out and glass onion, it would be in that kind of style. Can I, murder, I love those movies. Can I murder Jacob in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> you can murder me anytime you want, but guess what? You're not going to. Here, I feel like that might get a little too real. Let me pitch you an idea, Derek. Go for it. Go, go ahead and take your drink because this is going to take a while. So you want to do a murder mystery. Obviously, you don't want it to be like every other murder mystery film that's ever happened. You don't want some cheesy twist like the murder on the Orient Express where they were all in on it. Spoiler alert, that movie came out years ago. I don't care that you haven't seen it yet. What you should do is you should have a murder mystery where the setting is at the annual national Butler convention. <laughs> you have my attention. So that all the suspects are butlers. So that you don't know who did it. Because obviously the butler I... did it. But which butler? <laughs> Definitely or, wasn't or, Colonel Mustard. Here, get this. It happens at the Butler family reunion. So are they all butlers or is they're butler all last, their last name butler? Name? Butler's the last name. Butler family. That's actually kind of cool. I, I don't hate that idea, sir. The butler did it. <laughs> that could be the name of the movie. The butler did it. The butler did it. <laughs> yeah. Guys, are we going to get rich? Because <laughs> I think we're going to get rich. You know, I make fun of you a lot, Jacob. And, yeah, you do. Uh, this is actually a pretty decent idea. It, I, I don't hate it. Look, I really don't hate it. So This is why you want me to be... Trademark Open Micers Podcast, uh, the butler did it. So that's what we're throwing that out there right now. This is why you want me in a writer's room. I yeah. bring the magic. He does bring a point. You got to have an idea guy in the writer's room. You bring something. Ideas guy. <laughs> I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> I just know how to make sure. But it all starts with an idea. Yeah. I mean, that's how the feature started. I would watch a movie called The Butler Did It, and it was all about butlers with the last name Butler. And a uh, butler got murdered, but one of the other butlers did it. One of the other Butler Butler did yeah. it. The last name is Butler and the occupation is Butler. That's the family occupation. Maybe it's like a generational job where like it started with one guy and then his son becomes a Butler. Mm -hmm. His mm -hmm. son becomes a Butler. And, and then and then the patriarch Butler that got all the money from the wealthy heiress he took care of his whole life that died, left him all the money. And then someone offed him to get the money. And you have to figure out who killed Daddy Butler. Was it Butler? Obviously, or was it Butler or was it the other Butler? Exactly. For generations, they have buttled. <laughs> For generations, <laughs> they have buttled. <laughs> Until one <laughs> took it too far. <laughs> I think we killed Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, don't choke on the high chew. Oh, I'm chewing. And I'm high. <laughs> Hi, you coming no, to a I, theater this I, summer <laughs> i like this idea that that would be a unique spin on the whole murder mystery thing because they all have yeah. that formula i mean they all do it a little differently but they all kind of stick to the same thing right i would just i would write like the silliest like dumbest have you ever seen the show andrew tribeca i know of it but i've never seen it so it's like it's the dumbest humor ever like if you just love dumb stupid like the movie airplane right yeah just stupid humor that's what i would write for this movie just that like it's it's you're laughing because it's just the dumbest thing you've ever thought of in your entire life but i you respect could, that you could do like clue and you could film like five different endings or you could it's do just... avengers endgame and kill tony stark i don't know oh too soon. <laughs> Too soon. Isn't it funny how Clue is a satire of the murder mystery genre, yet it's the most recognizable murder mystery film ever? I love that damn movie. Oh, it's it's a great movie. We did a commentary track for it mm -hmm. for Nerd Cave Retro. I remember we didn't talk all that much because we were just so into yeah. the movie. <laughs> you guys are still doing that? 
Oh, uh, we did that one a while back. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it was like a year ago. Maybe you guys more. Are still doing that Nerd Cave Retro show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did it earlier tonight. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love you. Why don't Jacob. you do feature presentation instead? Uh, because I would work myself to death. I will say though that I I put absolutely no work into this podcast, and we can tell. And uh, thank you. <laughs> and um, whenever I I'm asked to co-host Nerd Cave Retro every once in a blue moon, there is actually a good bit of work that you guys put into that show that I admire. I do respect that. I mean, there's work. But it's it doesn't feel like work because it's something we right. would be doing anyway, playing old games. Yeah, I would be playing an old video game anyway. So it's just, oh, what game do I want to talk about on the show? Yeah. And then I pick that, and that's what I play. Gotcha. I mean, other yeah, than see, other than writing the notes that we write for for the reviews, I mean, that's really the yeah. only work there is. Well, I, I, when I did, I think I reviewed uh, Spider-Man for the PS1 when I was on there. And you know that's one actually, of our highest downloaded shows. It is. Oh, dude, I definitely said something not savory on there. What'd you say? I don't that's remember. A, I don't remember either, but like I definitely did, you know? <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> so that sucks for you guys. Yeah, it's been forever yeah. since I've listened to that episode, so I don't remember. I'll, I'll re-listen to it later. And then you'll have another download. Yeah. Um, no, I actually played the game and I um, like took notes while I was doing it. Like I, like I can see like how, cause I feel like we all have kind of like the same brain where you kind of just completely delve into something. Like I can see how you guys could spend like weeks, like researching a game. Well, with some of the longer games, yes. Cause yeah, like if you're playing something like Legend of Zelda or Chrono Trigger mm -hmm. games like that, Final Fantasy, definitely. There's a lot goes into reviewing those, but 90% of retro games are relatively short and mm. with walkthroughs and YouTube videos. Now you don't spend months playing those games. Like we did when we were kids. Cause we didn't have walkthroughs and YouTube videos to watch, to get past certain things. So you mm. can play an old game that would have taken me, you know, six months to, to finish when I was a kid, you can go through in a couple of hours now with a walkthrough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the Ninja Turtles game I reviewed last week. If I had played it as a kid, it would have taken me weeks. I beat it in two days. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did you play that on the Cowabunga collection, by the way? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I had that. I I played a little bit of uh, all of them. I didn't realize that they had so many uh, Ninja Turtles games for the uh, the Sega. Yeah, people people don't realize how popular Ninja Turtles were, especially in the '90s when that cartoon was in its heyday. They were everywhere. I, I remember as a kid seeing the Ninja Turtles at Disney World. Hmm. They showed up in, in the in the turtle van. It was sick. Dude, when I was a kid, and I, Derek, you might have been too young to remember Batmania <sighs> in 1989. The like how big Batman was at the time. My my uncles told me like are you talking about with the Tim Burton movie? Yeah, 1989. It, it was like Batman mm -hmm. was everywhere, and the only thing that could knock out Batmania from the the public consciousness was the Ninja Turtles movie that came out a year later, and then it was just Ninja Turtles everywhere for years yeah. after that. Yep, you had the movie, you had the cartoons, you had comic books, the toys. The I remember toys. selling like crazy. They were hard to find. Mm -hmm. Comics, I've still got everything. I've still got all my old Ninja Turtles toys at my parents' house. They're I mean, in like they, this huge plastic bin. They were the biggest thing on the planet. Every, everywhere you went, there was Ninja Turtles this, Ninja Turtles that. And I don't think things get that kind of traction these days. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. I feel like the Mar like the Marvel movies kind of do, but you don't see as much of it out in the world as you did like Ninja yeah. Turtles and Batman. I feel like even Marvel's starting to taper off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, you can't make that many toys for the 15th Ant-Man, you know? Yeah, I mean, there there are things that I'm looking forward to with Marvel, but I, I don't find myself as excited as, like, you know, with Avengers Infinity War or no. Endgame or when No Way Home came out. 
Right. It's just like I, I look forward to them, but it's not one of those things that like, oh, my God, I got to be at the theater opening night for it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even see anything in the theaters anymore because like, I, I'll i just wait for it to get on Disney Plus. Like I'm not, <laughs> you know, like I'll go to see the new Ant-Man in theaters just because I'm curious of how they introduce Kang. Mm-hmm. But I'm not like dying to see it. And even with with like Star Wars, I feel like Star Wars is so much better on TV, like TV Star Wars mm-hmm. is so much better than the movies now. I said it back when The Force Awakens came out. Star Wars needs to be a series because that's the best way you're going to be able to flesh out these characters. Because I'm telling you, Andor was one of the best series of, of all time. And people oh, yeah. hate it. I still need to finish it, but, it. Oh, that that show was so good. And it just made Rogue One even better. And I still say Rogue One is the best Disney Star Wars movie. It definitely is. Everyone yeah, died, and I'm a big that. fan of that. <laughs> it was ballsy of them to do that, though. Like, I wasn't right. expecting them to do it. And, of course, it's got one of the best scenes ever in Star Wars when Vader just goes ham on everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when he lit that saber, I'm like, that's a scene, like, right out of a horror movie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, they're all about to die. And then I'm telling you, after watch all watch through all of Andor and then go by, watch Rogue One. And it just, dude, it hits so much harder, the ending of that movie. And just to to get to know that character of Andor. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so I want to go watch Rogue One again right now. I haven't watched Rogue One in a while, but I, I would agree with you. I think it is probably the best Disney Star Wars movie. Here's a fan theory. So, you know, Andy Serkis plays a character in Andor, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What if that character in Andor becomes Supreme Leader Snoke? Who was also played by Andy Serkis. <laughs> I've never thought of that. That's what I thought that they were doing the whole time. And then I was just like, that's not him. Yeah, but Snoke kind of turned out to be a, a nothing burger. <laughs> I mean, just. Yeah, well, so uh, did all three of those movies, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm i'll be I honest if, if i was put in charge of disney at, uh, star wars at disney i would just say that those last three movies are not even canon they were like oh those were just a practice run that's the worst thing you can do though that's what they're doing with like the fucking the halloween thing i hate it dude only the good ones are canon the first two everything else is in the, the fucking dumpster fire you better add three in there it's not, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not. You're not on the uh, the Halloween three. You're on the Halloween three camp. No, he's yeah. Not. How it, do you feel about that, Derek? Halloween three, yay or nay? I, I'm pro Halloween three. I, I do say this. I think it would have been better received were it not called Halloween three. If it was just called Season yeah. of the Witch, I think it would have been a, a solid cult favorite. Which I I feel like it's gained more popularity now than than it did back then. For sure. Here's a counter offer. I think if um, it wasn't called Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, we wouldn't be talking about it right now because everyone would be like, oh, that's like the worst movie I've ever seen. And it would just disappear into nothingness. Maybe. I <laughs> I, I, I still I still like to think it would be a, a, a cult favorite. Yeah, I mean, but, I, but I see your point. Well, it's like the. It seems like the worse the movie, the more followers it has when it comes to to B horror. You know, it's the so bad it's great kind of thing. Right. Exactly. Just like the feature. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> it, it'll. <laughs> hey, hey! If it ever gets rift on MST3K, I'll consider that. Like, I'll retire after that. Sure. Oh yeah, dude. No, you should come back on so we can do a um, like a riff tracks on on uh, something. Oh, that'd be f- I've actually always wanted to do that. We could do Halloween three. OK, yeah, that was actually an idea that we've been trying to do since October is doing like a riff tracks or something on Halloween three. We should yeah, bring Wally it. and Wally and Joey on, too. I'm down. For yeah, that. that'd be we do a whole fucking thing. Yeah. That'd oh, be that'd be fun. That'd be so much fun. See, I think you're just missing the themes of the movie there, Jacob. <laughs> Dude, I'm not missing anything. I've seen it multiple times now, and it's just bad. It's not bad. It's good. 
Stop gaslighting me. (laughs) (laughs) Just make that the name of the episode, Gaslighting. (laughs) Stop gaslighting me. Now, the name of this episode is, um, what's the name of this episode? Gleeding with Eric Diamond. Uh, Please don't name it that. (laughs) I'm just calling it the Derek Diamond trifecta. I'm not putting Gleed or Gleek anywhere in the title. That's probably the safe thing to do. But he's been on four times, so shouldn't it be the the Derek well, Diamond? Well, he's, um, he's been a guest three times, so times. that's the trifecta. The okay. Derek Diamond guest trifecta. See, Derek, I mean, Jason loves his trifectas. I've noticed that when I scroll through the, the YouTube names, you love the trifecta. Mm-hmm. I love it when people are on three times because I love that word. It is a good word to say. It's a it's a cool word. It sounds like a cool band name. Like if you had three people in the band, like Rush, you call it Trifecta. Could start a uh, Zelda cover band, call it the Triforce Trifecta. I like it. What did they cover? Oh, just songs from the. It's all instrumentals, of course. Yeah, you do metal. uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, metal metal versions of of Legend of Zelda songs. All right, I'll be the lead singer. (laughs) <laughs> uh you beat me to it <laughs> all right so derek if you were given the reins to direct a, a a legend of zelda feature film do you think you could handle it or would you buckle under the pressure i'd probably buckle under the pressure but i'd still do it anyway because that's actually my dream project mm-hmm. i've wanted to do that since I knew I wanted to work in film. My number one goal was to do a Zelda movie or series. You think if if Super Mario Brothers uh, does pretty well, which I have a feeling it will, even though I'm still on the fence about Chris Pratt uh, as the voice. But of everything Mario. else about that movie seems great, though. It seems like it's going to be good. I have a feeling that if it does well, they're going to do a, either a Legend of Zelda movie or a TV series. And I don't know. I just kind of feel like. I I wish I knew how to get my foot in the door to to at least be a writer or something on that. Like that would be a dream project to work on Legend of Zelda. Jason, you got to shoot for the moon, Bubba. You got to audition for Zelda. Okay. I, I mean, who am I going to play? Ganon. <laughs> you could play Link's horse. Yeah, I could. Here, how about this live action Legend of Zelda? Will Poulter as Link. What do you think? Who? You don't know who Will Poulter guy, is? Isn't he the guy who's playing Adam Warlock? Yeah. In... Let me Google this, Will. See, I don't know who <laughs> I would cast as any of the characters. Like, I've thought about it, and honestly, I have no clue. Oh, I know this guy. Uh, I mean, he, he doesn't have a... He doesn't have a... Mm, I don't think he has the worst boyish. look for it. He's yeah. Boyish, he doesn't yeah. look very Linkish me he's that guy from you you're getting paid meme from the where the millers yeah you guys are getting paid you guys uh, getting paid i think we should have chris pratt play link oh god no <laughs> i 100 percent agree <laughs> make it an anime chris pratt you know make chris pratt link make him ganondorf just make him make him everybody so It'll even th- be zelda do you think if that does happen and they do a Legend of Zelda movie or series, do you think they're going to make it CGI or do you think they'll yeah. dip their toes back in the water for live action? The safe choice animation, I actually think is a, a straight up anime would be really cool. I think so. Cause you could too. do some really cool visuals with it. Um, Cause I, there's actually been several um, adaptations of, the Zelda games in Japanese comic form and they're they're really good and I I think that art style would work really well with Zelda um live action would be more of a challenge because who do you cast yeah and that would be it would be like Lord of the Rings level expensive well that's what I was gonna say did you get to uh actually watch um Rings of Power on Amazon Prime I've watched some of it if you were to do that level uh, that type of live action for Zelda, it could work. Mm-hmm. But you yeah. have to go all in on it. Like, you can't be cheap. Yeah. You got to create the entire world. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will say, I think that, um, honestly, there are a lot of mediums where animation is just 
like the obvious choice like adapting a video game obviously you want to do animation because if you try to take it from uh, a drawing to real life then there's going to be something lost in between whereas if you like adapt a book and put it to movie you're adding something but if you if you add a video you take a video game and take it to live action you're taking away from the product because you can't do in live action what you can do in the video game well, it's like what they're doing with the Mario movie with that style of animation, I think is perfect for yeah. Mario. It's like, I would even venture to say that's what they need to do with comic book movies. It's like you're losing so much from the comic book because you're taking a drawing and turning it into, you know, luckily something with a blank check written on it that you can just spend hundreds of millions of dollars on to look good. But there's still just so much being lost because. Did you guys it, ever you know, watch Arcane? on netflix about uh the show that's a based off league of legends Mm -mm. oh you got to get on that go watch arcane it's one of the best video game adaptations for a tv show it's so good and just go watch it just trust me watch it it didn't imagine dragons write a song for that show yeah they wrote the theme song for it Hmm. yeah i'm out imagine dragons in this economy (laughs) 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 Uh, i love it so fellas we're coming up on the end of the episode it's almost been an hour an hour has gone by already this flew by too fast going into cardiac arrest let's do another hour (laughs) okay pop more high chew you'll be good for another hour you kind of had your your wrestle your wrestlemania persona come out there for a second let's do another hour brother i'm gonna take you to the thunderdome i like it uh so before we go uh derek tell everybody where they can find your stuff on the internet if you want to follow the derek diamond experience just go to linktree.com slash d diamond podcast that's where you can find everything from youtube uh, links to social media where you can subscribe to the show New episodes drop every Monday morning. Uh, The show will be seasonal, so it'll run until early May. I'll take the summer off and then come back in the fall with the new batch of episodes. If you want to follow my movie, you can head over to at the feature movie on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and just go to Facebook where you can find uh, all the information for the feature premiere, which will be next Saturday, January 21st. And uh, tickets are pre-sale $10? Yep, ten dollars. Uh, it'll be part of a, a double feature, so we'll be playing a a doc. What's funny about the premiere is that it's going to be a double feature. First, will be a documentary about making a movie, followed by a short film about making a movie. So, if you want to know how to make a movie, this is where you yeah, need to be. Yeah, exactly. We're calling double it a feature. Uh, You're watching yeah. it twice. Yeah, no, we're, it's a docu a documentary than the feature. It's a feature double feature. <laughs> it's called the feature. <laughs> that hey, that would be the name of the sequel if there was one double feature. Oh, not dude, that's Yo! a great idea. We're write the script. Oh man, trademark Derek Diamond. There we yeah. go. <laughs> so- at, at some at some point, I actually do want to turn the feature into. Um, either like a six episode series or a feature length movie that would work at some point. But if I was to turn it into a feature, I would change the name to the short. Oh yeah. That, that's a good oh. idea. <laughs> Cuts a check. <laughs> <laughs> so Jacob, what you got going on before we get out of here? Oh dude, I'm going to be, um, well, this is happening in February, but I just got the word that I'm going to be an actor in uh, the Murder Mystery Dinner yep, coming up, too. hosted by our friend uh, Kyla Grace. That's cool. Gonna... Yeah, I hope I get killed, honestly, but you know what? We'll just see what happens. Maybe I did it. Maybe I'm the butler. Maybe, Maybe my last name's Butler. We'll never know. But um, yeah, I'll give you guys more information on that uh, once it gets closer to the thing than we actually know what else happening uh as in terms of the podcast next week we have on monty franklin who's an australian comic who has opened for joe rogan he's headlined the comedy store before he is a legit a-list comic uh then we also have pete jr coming on he's coming on tour in lafayette omar nava who's a very funny comic in his own right 
And in February, we've got Matt Wright and Nate, or I'm sorry, Neil Berliner, who has been doing comedy longer than I've been alive. So that's going to be very fun. Well, I will be in that murder mystery as well, uh, that we'll give you some information on when we get the information. Uh, my band, Falls From Grace, is going to be at Rockin' the Sound on March 18th, 2023. You can get your tickets right now at thesound228.com. Uh, it will be headlined by the band Nonpoint, and also there's going to be Adelita's Way, Gemini Syndrome, uh, all, Any Given Sin. So many cool bands are going to be there, so go get your tickets your pre-sale tickets right now. It'll be cheaper if you get them beforehand instead of at the door. So go to the sound 228com Get your tickets now. And I think that's about it. Is that it? Can we get out of here? Is that it, Jacob? Yeah, I'm done. I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's and uh, don't forget to go uh, check out me and Derek's other show, the Nerd Cave Retro Show, at Nerd Cave Retro on Twitter and Instagram <laughs> if you like if you like the retro gaming stuff because that's what we do over there. The Vigia games. The Vigia games. And if you want to email us, you can email us at uh, openmicerspodcast at gmail.com. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash podcast. And we're always above the $50 level these days, so we got to do something dumb for the month. So if you become a patron, you get to tell uh, tell us how to torture Jacob. So go over there, follow us, and we will see you guys next week. I do something dumb every month. <laughs> and that was an episode. It's actually Can't a great clip. <laughs> actually say that was a great clip to end on. I do yeah. something dumb every month. <laughs> Thank you. I've been trying to get better with my clips. I've been slacking. Yeah. I like it. My- my clips. My clips well, back. fellas, it's been fun. I got to go pee. <laughs> Before I, I old explode. men bladders, am I right? <laughs> Seriously, I am I am Invest an old man. Invest in some pull-ups, old man. <laughs> I should just put a bucket <laughs> under here. <laughs> but then... just get you a, a giant water bottle and you can just yeah. go whenever. Yeah. I'm yeah. peeing right now. <laughs> right. Well, thank you guys for watching on Twitch and YouTube and we will see you guys next week.